Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. What's going on, people? My name's Timmy Joe, coming at you lunch day. Knocking it out of the park with the AMD parts. We have the Radeon RX 5700 in hand. I've got the B-Team uh, review samples. I also got a Ryzen 3700X. Review is up for that on the channel, and I spent a buttload of time on that CPU review where this is gonna be more of a preview because I didn't even have a driver for this until like 36 hours ago. So there's no way I have a good enough impression on this. And I don't even think the drivers are good enough to really give a first day, a good first impression on this, a good first day impression. So let's talk a little preview on this. And uh, yeah, check out my Ryzen 3700X review. Did a lot of work on that. It's a super awesome CPU. It's totally worth checking out. Links will be at the end of the video or whatever. Time to talk about Radeon. Radeon, my old pal Radeon. So this launch is stupid for these cards. I'll come out and say it. Why are you launching cards video cards not that great of video cards like they're all right but they're not blowing out of the water on the same day you're is like the biggest launch you've ever had for cpus ever it's silly they kind of did this you know uh, uh time and time again where they kind of screw up the launches for their video cards when their cpu launches are usually bang on okay and uh it's not only that this is launching on you know the the same day as Ryzen and it's going to be overshadowed blower model no mention of partner cards with actual good coolers. 5700 doesn't even have a backplate on it. Uh, you know, it's hard to say a lot of good things about this, except for it's legitimately a really fast card. It's not bad. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a 1440p uh, high ultra settings, 60 to 100 frames a second card. You can run a 1440p 144 hertz monitor with this. No problem. Pretty damn good. But, you know, it's still got some launch day issues. Not as bad as the Radeon 7, of course. Uh, not at all. You can actually overclock out of the box with this thing. In MSI Afterburner, of all things, you can do it. Just with the launch drivers that I got. I didn't even get AMD's driver. They, they never even sent me any. So I think that there's problems with these drivers and they were trying to iron them out before, you know, a guy like me got a hold of them. But I got a hold of the, the press drivers. So I hope that what I came up with will be mirrored in other people's uh, reviews. But this is a preview of this. I did not have, I ran like 12 gaming benchmarks and I didn't have enough time to like really play around with this too much. So unfortunately, uh, you'll have to wait a couple of days. But I, in a couple of days, I plan on doing something to this. I'm gonna take the cooler off because it's actually got the pattern that I can take the cooler off and replace it with either an Accelero or that NZXT bracket with the uh, so I can put an AIO on it. So I will I will make a board partner version of this card within a few days. So subscribe, check it out, and I will get back to you with some uh, you know a couple drivers later and uh, a different cooler, and we'll see how this thing performs and how much better it off it could be. But you can tell the uh, the overclocking on this is very limited. Uh, AMD seems to be eliminating the ability to overclock at every step of the way because that's how they get the most out of their stuff so that they can compete, unfortunately. And this is no different. It's got a, you know, a, a ability to overclock. It basically, it says 1750 in uh, Wattman or, you know, in MSI Afterburner, and you can take that to 1800 or 1850. All that does is bring the actual clocks from 1600 to 1625 to maybe if you overclock this thing to 1800 or 1825 you might you know get a constant uh you know uh clock speed of like 1700 in game okay and you definitely have to turn on the blower that you can hear it in fact stuck this thing will get loud enough to hear all right heaven's been running for like 12 15 minutes now and uh we're at 74 degrees case is open It's audible, but it's not terrible. So I don't know why they launched them with blower cards. They must be just that cheap and their margins are so small on these that they can't afford backplates and they just put fancy blowers on both of them. I, I don't get it. And it would have been way better had they said, well, you know what? These are actually just kind of, you know, our, our versions, but hey, Asus is on board and uh, Gigabyte's on board and, you know, Sapphire's on board, Azrock's on board. They all have their own versions coming out. But we heard nothing of this. So... 
AMD next graphics card launch, would you please just wait a week? <laughs> Set a launch date in your heads and then like go, actually it's a week later. <laughs> just do that. No one will be mad if things are kind of worked out. You know, maybe even this could have used two weeks after the Ryzen launch and it would have been better. So actual impressions of this thing, and I did run some gaming benchmarks, so I'll show those in a second, but this is a first impressions, didn't have enough time with the card. It's very fast, it's awesome. It slots between a 2060, 2060 Super and a 2070, depending on the game and how well things work with you know Radeon or uh, AMD versus Nvidia. So it is a worthwhile card at $350. It definitely helps to bring the prices you know, of Nvidia cards down, or I don't know how that's really working. It kind of seems like it, Nvidia is the one that's bringing the price. Anyways, this is a really good option at 350. And then I can only imagine that the uh, XT, the 5700 XT will be an even better buy because th from what leaks came out and stuff like that, uh, in, in my impressions, it seems like it's actually quite a bit faster than this for only 50 bucks. Like, you know, enough to be worth the 50 bucks. So I think they're gonna sell a lot of 5700 XTs. It's gonna be, they're, they're worthwhile to be in the market. This isn't Vega, this is, you know, and I sure hope it's not Vega because if you can't buy them like you couldn't buy Vega, that's gonna be pretty silly. But I would imagine that this is gonna be a lot smoother than any Vega launch before. And this is as fast, this replaces the Vega 64, for sure. And it's definitely cooler, sucks less power than that card did to achieve that same level of performance. It's, 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 it's almost there if it's not. And it will only get better as drivers get better because I was seeing some driver issues. So let's get into the gameplay I had with this thing. Very limited. I started off in my GPU test bench, which is the 7820X, right, 4.8 gigahertz, basically 9900K's your older brother that's a little bit not as fast, but it's, it's close. And uh, as per my Ryzen 3700X review, it's actually like neck and neck with the, uh, with the 7820X. So I have two platforms with basically the same IPC or the, the CPU speed to back up a video card of this nature for sure. So I plugged this in the 7820X, started doing some benchmarks. It looks really good. Apex Legends, man, 100 FPS, uh, 1440p, super awesome. And then uh, I always get into Fortnite because this is the game everyone plays. And I was having just issues with crashing immediately. I thought maybe it was a little overclock I had on the card, so I turned it off. It wasn't working. Thought maybe it was something else, so I, tr I troubleshooted it a bunch, and it was just always going to shut off in Fortnite, or the frame times would just be really bad, and then it would shut off. So I switched this over to the Ryzen 3700X system, and I did a whole bunch of testing on that one just to kind of, you know, get a comparison between both uh, um, both of the systems. And Fortnite ran better. I don't know if the Fortnite was just broken or what, but it had really bad frame time issues. Like you would just look the camera around, and it would jump down to one FPS for like a whole second. So. There was something to do with Fortnite not being good on this. And I thought maybe it was just uh, an Unreal or like a, yeah, an Unreal Engine problem. But I ran PUBG and it seemed to be better, or at least not crashing. Because uh, Fortnite actually had like missing textures and stuff. Like, and I was, I think I was in some water, but it was like I was stuck on the water. And then I got stuck to where the game just wasn't running right at all. So, and that was on, you know, both systems, I was having the same kind of issues. So those are completely different installs of Windows, completely different installs of the game. I don't know if it was a Fortnite server issue or if it's actually just a problem with this card. I guess we'll have to see with some other reviewers, but the rest of the games ran fairly well, except for there was definitely some 0.1% low frame time issues, some hard skips in the middle of games that it shouldn't, this card should not be doing that. So I'd imagine the press driver is just not good enough yet, as it always isn't with AMD's launches, and it'll only get better. That's why we're going to do a re-review, an actual review of this in like a week or two, and I'll put a different cooler on it, and we'll see if we can maintain a better boost clock and actually get some super good performance out of this. So that leaves us with the video game benchmarks. I'll flip over to that, and then we'll come back and do a quick little sum up of the whole thing. Launch those benchmarks, Timmy Joe!
All right. It's been a lot of work. I'm sweaty and uh, you know, it's been hot and I've been doing all these reviews and I'm overtired and whatnot. Time to get to the meat and potatoes of this thing. I think this has potential as long as it can grow like the RX 5 480, I should say, did. This card has potential to be a really, really good competitor in the market. But I wish on launch day they would have said, hey, all these partner cards are you know, going to be available within two weeks of the launch. You know, and we would have had some impressions of those at launch. That would have made a lot more sense. But it being a blower model, and I haven't heard of any you know, uh, board models yet coming out, th this is a hard sell kind of right now, especially with a little bit of launch day issues and stuff like that. I mean, you can hear this thing on, on you're not going to find a 2060 that you can hear or 2070 super or whatever that in game you can hear. That's uh, this thing sounds like a vacuum cleaner. As soon as you're playing a game for a half hour, that's a terrible look for you. AMD stop, stop releasing these. I thought you stopped and got the impression when Nvidia switched up their founders edition models and you actually put a nice cool, well, sort of a nice cooler on a card. Stop it with the blowers on launch day, because it makes it hard to sell your cards. They're, this is a good card, but it's got a couple of drawbacks. But at the price point, it's gonna it's gonna be a pretty good success for them. It's not gonna blow you know Nvidia out of the water or anything. But I can see this of the growing, especially if uh, higher than the XT model comes out, a 5800 or something like that. And then we have you know a 56 and a 5500, and those fill out that like low end RX 570, RX 580, you know kind of realm. And they're they're under 200 dollars. That would be super super good. We need that. So please make that happen. But I'm glad that they released this card though. It's it's a step in the right direction. So I'm on Watch Jimmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. I hope that was enough of a review of this or mini whatever first impressions. I'm sorry that it's not quite as good as the other video, even though the other video is like 25 minutes long. So bear in for that. But uh, Ryzen 3700 review, go check that out. This thing's pretty good, pretty good, but it's not good enough to be ecstatic about, especially on the launch date of one of the best CPU launches ever to see. This is just a little footnote, unfortunately, and we'll, it remains to be seen on whether it'll grow to be more than that. So I'm not watching me do Instagram and Twitter. Thanks to AMD for sending this out. Hey, listen, look at funny shirts. They're available on Redbubble. Boom. Check it out. Redbubble. I made shirts. Navi. It's not the same card, but shh. I actually shouldn't be showing that, but anyways. Don't worry about it. So I'm Timmy Joe, Instagram and Twitter. Thanks very much for watching. This has been my preview of the RX 5700. A good step in the right direction, but hey, AMD, you got some work to do, baby. So get out and do it.